Well, I, again, I would say I would have to go back to generalities. You know, I'd say we're in the infancy stage of uh, evaluating our current roster. Uh, we're in the infancy stage of uh, putting our defensive game plan uh, of what we want to be and how we want to be uh, related to our roster. I would say the key for us is to put the players in the position to succeed and how we can do that most frequently is, is kind of what we're working towards. Um, again, to me, it doesn't really matter what happened in 2018. Like the 2019 for me, like all the players, make it included, would be like a blank slate and, that, and kind of approach it that way. I think, I think it's a holistic approach. I think you need uh, all 11 guys that are out there on the same page. I think, uh, you know, obviously there could be times when you have really good coverage in the back end and it allows a little extra time for the defensive guys up front to get there or the defensive guys can get there so quick they can allow opportunities for you in the back end to make plays on the ball. So I, I think it, you know, I think it's a thing of trying to coordinate the whole group together all 11 guys working on the same page, and I think that's what we're going to strive to do, putting those guys in the best position to do that based on their abilities. Yeah, I, I think Xavier, you know, he had, a, he had a good amount of production last year, and obviously, you know, you liked a lot of the things that you see on film. I would say for me, I was more focused on the offensive side of the ball. Um, there, you know, there's a little bit of crossover, but even when you're watching the crossover tape, you're still primarily focused on what the offense is doing. So, again, like, you know, it, it really goes back to being in the infancy stages of evaluating everybody that's on the roster and um, putting them in the best position to succeed. How would you characterize your relationship with Ryan Hobson? Uh, I would, you know, uh, I'm very, very happy for, uh, you know, Coach Flores, uh, you know, getting the opportunity. Uh, we've worked together for 13 years. Um, uh, he's, you know, I think he does, he's a great communicator. Uh, he's very intelligent. Um, I'm very excited to work with him, very excited to be around him. Uh, you know, I, I feel truly blessed that, you know, that we're able to, one, continue our friendship, but two, continue our professional growth together, I, I think is an awesome thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, he obviously had a lot to do with it. Uh, you know, I, I think there's, you know, uh, again, I, I was just very, op uh, excited about the opportunity in general, um, but I knowing and understanding him, um, you know, I, I you know I feel very fortunate with the guys that he's built the staff. I think he's done a, a phenomenal job of putting the staff together. So whether they're guys that I knew from the past or they're new guys that I'm just uh, meeting, it's uh, you know I think we're all working hard to try to be on the same page. Well, first and foremost, I would say, you know, and again, I wouldn't want to speak for Coach Flores on that. You'd have to ask him. But I, w I would say for me, the thing is, is you, whether it's at New England or some of the colleges that I coached at, you take experiences from everywhere that you're at. And whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, um, you try to implement the good things, the things that you didn't like, you, you try to stay away from. Um, but I would say, you know, ultimately, um, knowing him for as long as I did, like, I know what he's thinking before he says it, you know, so it's one of those things. And um, I would say, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, whatever happened in the past is the past. Like, to me, I'm fired up and excited for the 2019 season.